distinguished guests from around the world, ladies and gentlemen. Actually, I'm Jian. Actually, it's my great pleasure to host you over here. Actually, not just because of the summit, you know. Actually, I'm the native of Hangzhou. So I was born over here, I got all my education here, and also founded the Alibaba Cloud here, okay. And uh, I just want to make sure you can pronounce the Chinese name of Alibaba Cloud. Actually, if you look, you know, if you happen to read my book, actually, I always use Ali Yun as its English name, okay. Actually, the editor of that book actually questioned me why, you know, you are using Ali Yun instead of Alibaba Cloud. I, I basically said, okay, if it's Alibaba Cloud, it could be any cloud if you replace Alibaba. If it's arguing, and that's very unique, okay. That's only one cloud company, that's only cloud company that around the world. So I prefer to use arguing instead of the Alibaba cloud, okay. And hope you like this Chinese word. And actually, Hangzhou is very, uh, I would say, a different city. So whenever people introduce to the Hangzhou, they will say it's, it's a beautiful city. But I would say it's a very different city. Uh, it is certainly full of uh, innovation. So there's a very unique saying of Hangzhou, and I'm not sure how much of you already know the, you know, the local dialects, okay. And there's a very special saying in the local dialects called the Hang Feng. That basically means that people here just love fashion, okay. And they just love to try new things, okay. And they, so it's, it is a city that uh, full of innovation. Actually, tradition could, goes back to even 70 years ago. You probably know that Makoboro, you know, visited the city a thousand years ago. And actually, I'm not sure it's not true history, but it's in the history book, okay. And uh, believe it or not, the thousand years ago, Hangzhou is the biggest city around the world. So Hangzhou, at that time, Hangzhou is the only city with a population more than one million people. That's not, that's not a big city, you know, thinking about some years ago. So this is a city that fills a lot of things. And the cloud is also very unique, you know, for this city. I'm not sure whether you know where this place is. It's called Liangzhu, okay. I'm not sure whether, you know, you realize actually you, the area you are in is called Liangzhu. And actually there's a museum and the site just a few miles from here. And uh, the museum is called the Liangzhu Museum. And you know the site is actually the World Heritage Site, you know, named by UNESCO. So basically, that site bring the culture, I mean, the, the history of culture in China, you know, from 3,000 years old to 5,000 years old, okay. So it is a very unique, I'm glad actually we have this, we have this summit over here. So when we chat with my friends, how actually cloud to bring us for, for, for the future? And they joke with me, you know, the Liangzhu gave us the opportunity to trace back our culture up to the 5,000 years old. So with this just the cloud should bring us to next, you know, 5,000 years, okay. So we have the 10,000 years of history here in Hangzhou. So it is a very exciting, it is a very exciting journey, okay. And also, you know, when I'm talking about the computing, I always start with the city instead of, you know, technology. So everybody knows that the city is the greatest invention of humankind. The city is the single biggest hardware we ever invented, okay. So if you look at the history of the city, and you can see that, that, that during the evolution of the city, we only, you know, just passed the two stages. And because of the computing, we are entering the third stage. So it goes back, you know, long time ago for the city of Rome. And they actually introduced a very important infrastructure called the road, okay. So at that time, you know, the, the, the road, you know, is the key infrastructure for the developed city. 
and they basically introducing the house power into the city. So thinking about uh, for a few for a few thousand years, and actually how many homes that you have in the city actually represents your civil, the level of civilization. Okay, and this takes a long time. That's why you think about that. You know, two hundred years ago, that even with the city of London, they have so many halls over there. Okay, and uh, it's become a headache for the city. So that's why I introduced the subway, and it takes long time for people to enter what I call the second stage, from the horse power to what I call the electricity. So with the introduce of electricity in the city, now we have the city like we have today. So thinking about the, the without electricity, we even won't have a conference like this here in this room. You know, you can see the sunshine outside of the building, but we still, you know, had a conference like this in the room with all the lighting, okay. And so electricity is actually reinvented city in the last century. So from house power to electric power, but I think today we are, ent we are entering the era, what I call the computing power. So computing is changing the landscape of the city. It's also, you know, it's, it's going to reinvent our city in the next 100 years. That's why I think the cloud computing is changing everything. So people will, will ask, and there was a challenge, you know, we do have a computer before. And why cloud computing is so different from the, the computer? And it's interesting, you know, if you look at the, the history of the, of the computer, of the history of computing, it is interesting, you know, because the, the word computing is actually there before we invent something, a new word called the computer. So actually, the computing is there for a long time before we have the word called the computer. And also, we, I, I sometimes I joke with the uh, professors in the university, in the computer science department. I feel very confused, you know, to ask them, you know, for me, we should have like a computing science and technology department instead of computer science and technology. So for me, when I first heard you, there's a, there's a department of computer science. For me, it's much more like you have the department of telescope instead of the department of optics, okay? And so we do have a single machine building a, a department for that. But actually, what's really behind that is the computing. So computing is really the essence of the computer. So for us, the cloud computing is really something release the power of the computing instead of a single computer. So when I work at Microsoft, and it's very interesting to know actually, you know, for Microsoft, Bill Gates has a very good vision that he hopes that every home has a computer. That's, that's Bill's vision. But Bill feel very, uh, I would say very sad or whatever you call it, after he first visited Africa. So goes back, goes back that time, after Bill with Africa, he realized that, okay, for the people in Africa, having a computer in every home is almost impossible. But today you're thinking about because of the cloud computing, we actually can bring the computer anywhere around the world, including the every home in Africa. So thinking about, you know, the, the, the people in Africa, you know, the, the phone is their first computer, and then the X computing power uh, through the network. So the cloud computing brings more opportunity ever to every people. Just like uh, what you have seen over here in the Asia game, that we are very extremely proud of, you know, uh, the Ali Yuen, actually the sponsor of IOC, the Olympic game, okay. So when the President Bach visited us three months ago, I talked to the Bach and, and said, okay. I said to the Bach, actually, you know, Ali is, just, is, is not just a sponsor for the IOC. We actually changed something. So thinking about the relationship between the electricity with Chicago World Expo, you probably know that actually because of Chicago Expo, 
the electricity, I mean the alternative current that invented by Tesla at a dominant. And, uh, and then you have this, what we call this electrical world. And so I personally view the sponsorship for the Olympic game is make sure that cloud computing eventually is going to be the only way for us to, keep, to access the massive power. So basically, Olympic events change the way that we use the computing. It's a, it's a, it's a huge thing. So I'm very proud, you know, start with the uh, uh, Tokyo game uh, last year. This is the first time actually for the Olympic game. They actually use the cloud to do the broadcasting. And that's really in a history. And interesting, you know, just coincidentally, uh, almost 40, 50 years ago, that in the 1964. And uh, the, at that time, the, the Tokyo game, that's the first Olympic game that using the satellites to do the broadcasting. That actually changed the Olympic game. So last year, also in the, in the Tokyo, that's the first time they used the cloud to do the broadcasting, to replace the traditional broadcasting system. So we really made the history of that, and I'm very proud of that. And uh, even more exciting is, you know, in the winter game in Beijing uh, last year, then this is the first time that the core system of Olympic Bay is running on the cloud. That's really something special. And because of this success, I'm very excited about, you know, in the next year, the Paris game. You can see that cloud computing is changing the Olympic game. So I think it's more than, for me, it's more than just business. It's really an exciting journey and, uh, and, and for us, okay. And, uh, and looking forward, it's, uh, it's uh, particularly, you know, with the, with the new introduction, what we call the artificial intelligence. So for me, it's, uh, it's more than artificial intelligence. It's basically, I always say it's uh, machine intelligence, okay. Human are great. And uh, what we're doing now, what everything we're doing is not replace what human is doing. So anything that we're doing is replaced by machine, that basically means that's not something you should do, okay. You do something more creative. You should do something more different. So I would rather say, you know, the, the machine intelligence instead of the AI. But with this introduce of machine intelligence and the computing is play even a more big roles, okay. So the, the chat GPT is just one of the example. And I always said oh, with the introduction of chat GPT is basically we find a new a theory, a new model for doing this modeling that's called the GPT. But it's interesting to see we found the synergy between the GPT and the chat and find an interesting application. But this gives us a new uh, uh, windows to, to, to try something we probably never even think, can think about it during the IT, in the era of the IT technology. So it's a, it's a, it's a big moment. We actually switched from, you know, IT-centric cloud computing to really on the AI-centric or data-centric cloud computing. So it's a big time. And uh, back again, you know, this is a city for our imagination. So if at time, and at least I would say, you just spend time to see the city. And there's a very uh, famous scientist in the history of China called Sun Kuo. I'm not sure you have noticed the scientist or not. He actually is the person funded the oil in the world. So he actually, he found the site with oil in, the, in the China. And he, read, he actually wrote a book. It's basically, it's the most famous science book in the history of China. So Hanzhou, Edgar is the author of this book, is as a native of the Hanzhou. So Hanzhou is just in a, in a place that uh, full of the, the, the Im imagination. And uh, again, thank you for coming to the Hanzhou around the world. And I uh, hope you enjoy the stay in the, in the Hanzhou. If any of you want to be your personal guide, I want to be to do that, okay. 
again, enjoy your stay in Hangzhou. Thank you.